G'day guys, my name is Walker and welcome back to my channel. It's Six Nation time, round one. Old rivalries are added again. Scotland versus England. This time, it's in Edinburgh. Last year, Scotland visited England and beat England at Twickenham. 38 years in the making. And uh, England wasn't happy. They're heading up to hostile territory this time and trying to win back the, the loss they suffered last year. So, here's the question. Is Scotland gonna rise up to the challenge and send the Honourable Sir Eddie, the proud Eddie and his army, back to think again? Or are they gonna lose to a uh, very, very shrewd and uh, competitive Eddie Jones? The one thing that we know about Sir Eddie is that um, he has promised last year to shuffle up the England side, and sure enough, there's big, big changes in the England team going into this match. Very different from the team that we saw in November Test Series against the Springboks. Despite winning the game against Springboks, the England side, eight out of the, the team that was played against Springboks has been shuffled out of, uh, of rotation. So, let's have a look at what's What's the uh, story going into this game for the England side? So first up, A players were left out. There were some injuries. Mano Tuilangi still not good. Johnny May is out. Johnny Hill's out. Courtney Laws has has a concussion. So probably the biggest name that people were expecting to play that not that's not gonna make it is Courtney Laws. Uh, Sam Underhill is out, and Bevan Rudd and Nick Dolly was just omitted from the team. I think there's another one. Uh, uh, Ruffy. Yeah, Rafi Cook is also out uh, because of selection. So Eddie Jones decided to cut these guys. Uh, Bevan Rudd, I did thought I did think that he wasn't that great against the Springboks, but Rafi, a lot of people thought he was pretty good. He was a little bit shell shock at the start, but then he pulled himself together, actually setting up a try for England. So I thought he probably deserved it a bit better. But yes, Eddie Jones, the uh, loves to swing the axe. So more people were axed. Good news is England does did bring back some of their players that a lot of people kind of wanted to see and have been talked about. We should go through all of them, but the big one is Sam Simmons that has been left out of the squad again and again and again and again and getting caught back because of injuries. Now he's getting a starting position at the number eight. This has this has to be his first start for England for like many many years, right? Uh, yeah, so this would be very impressive and he was incredibly impressive coming off the bench against the Springboks And a lot of people has been talking up about him. So we can't wait to see how he performs against England uh, Scotland as we all know there had been a bit of a issue that some people think is form But the, some of the pundits think there is some kind of issue between the coach Townsend and Adam Hastings That Hastings was not selected in the Scotland squad as a result. There's only one only one Specialist fly half in the Scottish team in the form of Thing Russells, and as we kind of like expected, that uh, Blair Kinghorn is going to be as a utility back. It's going to be filling in for the ten position. Yeah, so obviously Thing Russell is the the most important player in the backline for the Scottish team, and uh, yeah. So the weather in Scotland is going to be four degrees, a bit wet, a bit rainy. On Saturday afternoon evening and uh, yeah four degrees is really really cold in the rain and hopefully this is not gonna be too bad uh, hopefully things are gonna be you know 10 because I don't want to see like too scrappy of a rugby game being played now before we get through the whole list kind of just want to mention right England is the uh, richest team in the world the RFC right the richest richest club in the world and like, look at it. Like, who's doing their team photos? These photos are terrible. It look like mom trying to take a take a passport photo for me in the kitchen, right? Like, look at this. Look, look at this photo. They're just terrible photos. And just, just give an idea. Look at this photo for Marcus Smith. This Lions photo. Look at him. Look at that jawline. Jesus. Look at a, look how good this photo is. And look, compare this with this. What the hell's going on? Come on, England. You can get some better photographers. This is your national team here. Like that is. Uh, that's like huge contract. He, he looks like a model, right? Like, and this one just looks like he, and this one looked like some high school kid, like a fan put on an England jersey. Yeah, get some better photographers, get some better photos, England. 
Uh, stop taking photos in the kitchen, okay? Get some proper ones, get some proper setup, and uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, you have the money, you are the richest team in the world. Anyway, let's go through the list. Let's have a look at the key matchups here. So, the England side, they did have some struggling in the scrummaging against the Springboks. So, there has been a bit of shuffling around, uh, more shuffling around in the scrummaging for the England side, as we saw Bevan Rudd kind of left out. Uh, on the England side, this guy, Nick Isikiv, he's, I don't know him, but he's apparently played for England a few years ago against the Springboks in Johannesburg, where he had a pretty terrible game. And then he was dropped for like five years, apparently, that's the news. So he's finally back at number five, filling in for Courtney Laws. And Sam Simmons, as we mentioned, the big kind of number eight spot for, for England. The Scottish side forward pack has something that we kind of all expected. It's a very, uh, pretty much the same setup. I think it's the same setup as they had in, um, in the November test series. Pretty standard, we should go through everyone in a second. In the back line, as we mentioned, Finn Russell is the biggest, most important player for the Scottish side. His kicking hasn't been 100%, so Finn Russell's kicking really needs to pick up a notch if they want to have any chance of winning this game. Especially when it's rainy, there could be a lot of kicking, a lot of goal kicking involved as well. Marcus Smith, the future of England rugby, he is in at a 10. He is starting to, to you know, be in that, becoming that dedicated 10 position for England going forward. His kicking is very good. On-field kicking, kicking game is very good. And his uh, goal kicking is also incredibly good as well. And in the back line, the biggest thing for England is Elliot Daly is back at number 13. So he has played centre before, but this pushes Henry Slade, who would normally play at 13, or who, who, who plays at 13, who played at 13 last year for England, pushes him to number 12 because Owen Farrell is injured at now. I do feel like the playmaking abilities for Henry Slade at 12 is not really there. And Elliot Daly has a good kicking, uh, like, good kicking, has, has pretty good, like, big boot from the 13th position. So it's interesting to see how this center combination is going to work out for England. But, yeah, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting to see. Uh, Elliot Daly wasn't even selected for the squad. Like, wasn't even in the squad before Owen Farrell was injured. Now he's back. He's straight into the fold, straight in the starting team. Yeah, so um, I don't really, yeah, so that's the, that's that's basically happening. I was expecting, you know, I honestly expect them, uh, if, if I was, if, if I was, I, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Eddie Jones actually tries it at some point to put George Ford at 10 and then have Marcus Smith at 12. Uh, that would be, yeah, because Marcus Smith is much more agile with the playmaker at 12. would open up a lot more options for England. Something that Eddie Jones kind of likes to play anyway. Henry Slade is not the, it's not really the style Eddie Jones really wants. So if England loses this game, I think Eddie Jones will very likely pull the trigger on Marcus Smith at 12. But um, we'll have to wait and see. For the Scottish side, pretty standard. Uh... Uh, Duhan van der Merwe at 11, one of the most dangerous players, players in the Scottish side. Pretty similar, pretty much the same. In fact, it is the same setup as they had uh, in the November test, international test series. In the, uh, Yeah, basically, yeah, so we have for England on the bench, a lot of experience. George Force uh, on the bench for Marcus Smith. And then for Scottish side, there is... Uh, pretty yeah, pretty standard stuff from the Scottish side off the bench. The uh, Samoa Tui Pulotu, the Australian guys, getting a shot at number twenty three for uh, for Scotland. So that's kind of like the overview. But yeah, let's get into the the exact lineup against the uh, yeah heads up against against the, uh, the between the two teams. So yeah, first up, Scotland in the loose position. Uh, Rory Sutherland, he's up against Kyle Sinclair. This will be a good matchup. George Turner coming in at number two. Zander Fagerson at number three. So Fagerson has really developed a lot as a tight head prop. He, not, not that long ago, he was, you know, still coming off the bench. Now he's getting that permanent starting spot at number three, and he's definitely getting better. But he is a little bit niggly on the field, something that he really needs to kind of like stop. He, he could potentially cost his team uh, just by not controlling his own emotions on the field. Ellis Genji coming in at number a loose hip for proposition instead of Bevan Rod. I really do agree with this. This is a much more solid selection there. Luke Cowan Dickey, number two, also a really solid selection for the um, for the for the hooker position. And as, as we already mentioned, Kyle Sinclair, his form hasn't been as good as he, as he was in 2019 Rugby World Cup. But we shall see if he's improved or he's trying he's getting back into the form that he was before. He's definitely not 
talk the pe pecking order anymore as he was in 2019 in terms of tight head prop. Johnny Gray comes in at number four for Scotland. One of the most instrumental players last year for the Scottish team in beating England, just being able to really dominate that breakdown. It was just really impressive stuff. So another huge weekend to see him in putting some big numbers out for the Scottish side. Uh, Grant Gilchrist coming in at number five alongside Johnny Gray. For the England side, Mario Toje probably will be their go-to line-out jumper from, from here going forward. Uh, Nick, I see Kev is at number five who is stepping in for Colin Laws. And... Yeah, so Mari Toje seems to be uh, the key line out jumper option for the England side. We shall see how this goes. We shall see how Nick performs performs under pressure in Scotland. So this could be a little bit of weakness here in the line outs if Scotland prepares to uh, to really target that area. And the loose forwards positions, we'll have Jamie Ritchie at number six, Hamish Watson number seven, and Matt Fagerson number eight. Pretty standard setup for Scotland, Scotland side. Uh, Jamie Ritchie and Hamish Watson, absolute workhorses around the field. Really, really good at breakdown. Really high work rate, both players. And um, something that, yeah, it's, uh, they're going to have to put in a lot of work in the English pack. Because England has opted for like a, a bit bigger. In fact, a lot bigger in terms of the flankers. So you can see that Tom Curry is 110 kilos, uh, Watson is 102, uh, Lut Ludum, Lewis Ludum is at 111 kilos, and Jamie Ritchie is 105. So the English um, loose forwards are much, much, I would say, uh, you know, Stefan has a bit of a size advantage over the Scottish, Scottish players, but does that mean they're a little bit slower around the park? We'll have to see. Tom Curry. He is definitely a, uh, he's, he's a menace around the park. He almost plays a number eight, and Eddie Jones has tried to play him at number eight. He does do like a lot of support running in the back line. That could be something that the the uh, the mutt, the little bit more agile Scottish loose forwards could exploit. Uh, Sam Simmons coming in at number eight. Uh, long I've been you know a lot of us have been waiting for this for him, for him getting the starting spot at number eight for a very long time now. We shall see how he goes. He's very, very, very good. And Eddie Jones has overlooked him again and again and again. And for someone who just, you know, never gives up, puts his head down, works hard, gets back into the picture again and again and again, getting back on the radar, finally getting that starting spot number eight is uh, quite, uh, so yeah, very big weekend for him to prove himself uh, for, for Eddie Jones. In the back line, Ali, Ali Price comes in at number nine. Ben Youngs, I think Ben Youngs is the most capped player for the England team. At the moment, yeah. So Ben Youngs is the most cap player for the England team, 112 Test caps up against Ali Price. Fing Russell comes in at number ten. Marcus Smith at number ten. The two tens who are most, you know, the most versatile tens. This is a really great matchup in the in the game of tens. They're both really versatile, really uh, agile. Both have really good kicking game. And you know, last year there was talks that if Finn Russell had to play. If the Lions tour for the full duration uh, and then really would have opened up the Lions tour a lot and would have probably given the Lions the win instead of having Dan Bigger, the more traditional kind of like style of number 10. But the thing with Finn Russell is his goal kicking. His goal kicking percentage is uh, quite on the low side, whereas Marcus Smith is really up there with his goal kicking. So we shall see how this goes. And this could end up with being a really exciting rugby going on this weekend. We could see a lot of attacking, a lot of, you know, playmaking out of these two. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like watching two magicians do their tricks. And uh, I can't wait. This will be a really, really good matchup. Uh, and, a number, and in the blind side winger position, uh, Duhan van der Merwe comes in at number 10. And Joe Merchant at a number 11 for England. Joe Merchant uh, has played exceptionally well for England against the Springboks. Uh, it's good to see that he's getting a permanent spot almost for the England in the winger position. Uh, Van der Merwe also had an exceptional uh, year in the Lions tour. I do think that the the way Warren Gallen used Van der Merwe, getting him to chase those high balls, getting him to to move around the field, is much better than the way Scotland plays Van der Merwe. The way Scotland plays Van der Merwe is just like a big winger with speed, they wanted to use him as a, just kind of like a runner. 
Whereas the way the Lions kind of used him is more like a chaser, like a fullback that's putting pressure, using the height advantage, using the size advantage to try to chase those high balls, putting pressure uh, under the... Yeah, um, yeah, putting pressure f against the fullback. So it's like very different kind of styles the that he's been playing between the Lions test and the uh, the Scottish way of playing. So maybe I felt like, yeah, I, I felt like Van der Merwe definitely probably should play a bit more like I, I feel like the way Warren Gatlin uses him is a bit more efficient and gets more out of him than the way the Scottish team is using him at the moment. He doesn't really get the ball that often, uh, to be frank, in the in the way that the Scottish set up. Uh, but every time, whenever he does get the ball, he does look very threatening. So I, I figured they, they, they should figure out a way to try to give him more opportunity around the field because he is, you know, the most dangerous man in the Scottish team. Uh, in the in the in the center position, Sam Johnson comes in number twelve. Chris Harris, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty solid combination for the Scottish side at the inside and outside center position. Uh, and these two guys has been worked together for a very long time. Harry Slay comes in to number twelve position for number thirteen. Elliot Daly comes in from call up at number thirteen spot. So we might see some kicking out of LA Daly in the outside center position. It's not like unheard of. We've seen that in, in fact, the Wallabies does that. They, they do a lot of kicking out of the 13 spot instead of the traditional 12 spot. So we shall see if that's going to happen with LA Daly. But I do see that they're probably just going to use LA Daly with that, his size and speed as a, like a ball runner at the, at the uh, outside center position more than like, you know, like a, like a kicking number, you know, kicking kind of, kind of, kind of position from number, number, four, number 13. Darcy Grahams comes in number 14. Uh, Max Mallins comes in number 14 for, for England. And then the mo the probably one of the most important positions on the field these days, the fullback, Stuart Hogg. The best fullback in Northern Hemisphere, potentially. He's up against the giant, the goalkeeper, England's goalkeeper, Freddie Stewart at number 15. Uh, Freddie Stewart, almost 2 meters tall, 107 kilos. He's huge and he's extremely good under those high balls. So... Yeah, um, that's, you know, and also they have Elliot Daly there, so he's, you know, also an exceptionally good fullback. So, uh, with the kicking game, I don't know how much Scotland wants to play that. I feel like, yeah, I feel like England's kind of, you know, got that covered with both Freda Stewart and potentially Elliot Daly sweeping back in defense. Um, but Stuart Hogg is definitely the best fullback in the world. Last year, Stuart Hogg single-handedly, essentially, closed out the game against England, winning the game for Scotland. His kicking game... Uh, his kicking game was just exceptional last game, no, last year, and he was able to manu basically maneuver the England pack <laughs> at will in uh, with his kicking. So we shall see how that goes this year. Uh, this year with uh, Freddie Stewart at fullback, and uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see how that's going to turn out on the bench. Uh, Stewart McAnally comes in at number sixteen. Piers Showman comes in at seventeen. Uh, Willem. Willem Nell comes in at number 18 for the front row reserves for Scotland. Jamie George comes in at hooker position at number 16. Joe Mala, the uh, the guy who's got COVID twice already, uh, comes in at number 17. And Will Stewart comes in at number 18. So this is a big shakeup on the bench as well for the England side. A lot more experience in the front rower. So maybe maybe Eddie Jones has identified that weakness in their front rower and has opted to put more experience uh, in the on the bench, essentially. Uh, they've Got, yeah, so that's uh, something definitely Eddie Jones is made changes on. Uh, Sam Skinner comes in number 19 for Scotland. Magnus Bradbury comes in at 20 for Scotland. Charlie Ewells, England at number 19. Alex Stonebranch comes in at number 20. I am surprised that Alex is not playing. Um, I mean, Alex is a, is, is a number 8, but uh, yeah. So Alex Stonebranch had a really good season with Harlequins this year. And he was... Yeah, very, very good for Harlequin. So good to see him getting a spot here. And this will be a good chance for him to prove himself to try to get that starting position. Uh, and then we'll have Ben White at number 21. Harry Randall, 21 for England. Uh, Blair Kinghorn, 22, the utility back reserve. George Ford getting caught up the England side as a result of, of Owen Farrell's injury. Comes in at number 22. So George Ford, I really felt like probably deserved a starting position. He was voted like play of the year or something by his club or like one of the club rugby's so he's exceptionally good to not be in the team uh before the injury of owen farrell really says a lot about the way eddie jones kind of selects his his players 
uh, despite you know Owen being injured for like three months, I haven't played at all. He still was selected over George Ford, who's had an exceptional season with his club. So Eddie Jones selections definitely uh, something that uh, something that when we yeah, yeah maybe maybe yeah, definitely has a bit of a bias in there. Uh, Sione Tuipulotu comes in at number twenty three for the Scottish side. And Jack Noel comes in at number 23 for England. And that is a lot of them, guys. Let me know your predictions. My predictions, I felt like I felt like Scotland could potentially, with home ground advantage, pull up a little put up an advantage, put up a put up a wing here. Because this Scotland side has been playing. They have the same setup. Uh running the same setup for, you know, since November last year. So they've been all these guys have worked with each other quite well. They they tried a lot of different things in the November test series. This is the time to put those tests into like action. So I do think that Scotland has got something they're going to pull out of the bag. Whereas England seems to be still making a lot of, you know, shuffling, making a lot of changes. Uh, Eddie Jones is still trying to figure out what he wants to do with different players. And also with the injuries, uh, at, with Owen Farrell's injuries and Elliot, uh, you know, a lot of these guys getting pulled back in the last minute. I do feel like England might, like the way the team's going to gel, might be a little bit clunky, especially in a bit of wet conditions. Away, I, f I feel like there could be an upset here for Scotland against England. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. Do you think Scotland is going to pull up another wing against, uh, against England? Thank you for watching this video, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll uh, see you guys for the reviews on the weekend. Cheers.